Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to look at photos again in our Don't Do This series. Went into our files and we found all these photos. We we have over 300 of them, something like that. But they're good teaching tools, and, and that's what we want to do. We want, we want to use them as, as teaching. So let's look at these first photos here. This example, we got speakers right against the wall. Can't have that. We should know that by now. In most of our videos, we, we talk about that. And then what do we have for a rear wall? Plate glass? Hikes? I mean, what, what are we trying to do to our system here? And what are we trying to do to our sound quality that we're trying to create? So this is a good example of, of improper setup. Want to get you know the proper surface area treatments in the room. Keep the speakers away from room boundary surfaces. You know, that's just got to be a must. We can't have uh, any of that going on at all. This next photo, lots of gear in the middle between speakers, some treatment in the corners. But remember, we have to keep that gear out of that mid-range continuity, I guess, so to speak. You draw a line from the mid-range drivers from left channel to right channel. That's the line that all the equipment must stay below. That's the goal. You want it to stay below that so it's not interfering. This is a very small room. Lots of clutter. We've got a curtain on the left channel side. I don't know what's on the right channel side. Uh, we don't have a photo for that. But we've got a screen in the, in the top part. So another tough surface area to work with. This next photo, we just have a rear wall that's a nightmare. We have a kitchen. We have a sofa where we sit. But just think of yourself as energy. If you're going to go into this area, what are you going to sound like? What are you going to interact with in the room? You're going to interact with hard surfaces. You're going to interact with tables chairs, stools, uh, hard surfaces in the kitchen. And this is going to create a very brittle type of sound quality behind you. So you're going to have this competition of all this distortion behind you and hopefully a front end that, you know, is conducive to pr producing good sound. Mm -hmm. However, notice some of the treatment on the ceiling area. And we see this all the time, one and two inch thick treatment. One and two inch thick treatment can't do anything, especially if it's made of building insulation, which I suspect this kind of stuff is. Most of it is. So it's not deep enough. There's not enough of it. It's not in the right position. So there's just a lot of things that are going bad in this room from the beginning. All right, let's look at this next one here. This is a common situation we see in theaters. We'll have the left channel completely open, and then we'll have the right channel up against the wall. This produces a phase that's so audible, I, I just can't believe people, even novice and beginners, would use this kind of setup. Because it's, it's immediately heard when you set up this way. So... We, if you have an open area in a theater or anything like that, the best thing to do is put that open area to the rear of your system. Put it as the back wall, and that'll reduce in, uh, reflections, reduce pressure, and keep that sound field at the front of the house intact. And that's the goal. We want to keep all of those issues going correctly in the front. Here, we have diffusion in the corners and in the center. It looks to be a different frequency response in both diffusers, and that's never a good idea. If you're gonna treat a surface area, you wanna keep the frequency response of the diffuser the same all the way across the surface area. Another issue, it would be like combining horns and dynamic drivers and expecting to get the same sound. You can't do it. So the bottom line is, keep the diffusion sequences the same throughout the room. That's the goal. All right, let's look at this next one. 
Boy, a lot of gear here, a lot of clutter, horns, some type of homemade diffusion system in the middle. I don't know what it is. It's not very deep, so it can't do very much. But look at the gear on the sidewalls. On the right channel, we even have a video screen. So this is an example of what not to do. Now, you can get away with it with horns probably because they just radiate so much energy. You know, that the reflections might not be an issue or, in this case, are not bothering the person. But, you know, this is an example of what not to do. And look how close they are to the sidewalls. So that's a big problem, too. So we see a lot of issues in these rooms. And setup is so critical because the resolution of our gears is really good today no matter what the price point is. So the goal then is to have good gear that has decent resolution, and then we take that gear and we put it in a room that's horrible, that has low resolution. So you're never going to hear what you need to hear out of the room. So keep the clutter down. You know, keep, Let the music be the music. Let everything in, operate in free space. Manage the reflections. Manage them with the proper rates and level of absorption. Don't use equipment as a, an acoustical tool for management. So these are some examples that we have from our rump farms. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.